Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we're going to continue our discussion or advice on J2534 programming. If you have not seen the first video, please see the description and watch the first video first. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, first things first. Any of the equipment that you see used in my videos is available on the website. If it's not there, send me an inquiry off the website toolhutusa.com. That's T O O L H U T USA.com. My name is Sam. Okay, so after you've watched video one, you've decided that you want to get into doing some programming. So you bought a piece of equipment or bought the necessary pieces of equipment, the J2534 device, the stable power supply, and a laptop. I'm not done making you spend money yet. So you've made the commitment. Let's get this thing going and let's make it productive. Okay, so you got all the equipment to do this job. You need some place to put it. I strongly, strongly, I can't strongly stress it enough, suggest you put it in a toolbox all by itself. Make it a dedicated programming toolbox. Doesn't need a lot of drawers. It does need a few. We're going to go over some of the stuff you should have in the drawers. Okay, so what goes in the cart? First things first, our J2534 device. Your laptop your stable power supply, I recommend attach it if possible, if I can spell it will help right, the other thing is we want a multi, multi strip or a uh, multiple places to power, a power strip multiple places to plug things in. So we want a power strip at least four. Four outlets. Want an extension cord. I suggest a 25 footer, a minimum of 12 gauge. So I want a high quality extension cord dedicated to the cart. The next couple of things that people are going to say they got them in their toolbox. When you're doing programming, sometimes you need some tools in a hurry. So I want you to have these. They don't need to be your the highest quality stuff. They just need to be available in a hurry. You want a test light. And just a cheap voltmeter. That'll, that should get you going. A couple things. You, uh, you want to know where your jump box is at. You don't necessarily need a jump box for the uh, cart, but know where it's at. And a flashlight. And again, you don't need a flashlight dedicated to the cart, but hey, bring one over with you when you're going to do a program. Uh, You'd be surprised how many times you're going to need it. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so we're ready to hook it up, right? So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up our p stable power supply. Depending on the vehicle you're doing, most vehicles like around 13 and a half volts. So, if you've got a variable voltage, I suggest around 13, 13 and a half volts. There are some exceptions to this, but this is a pretty good place to start. I want you to plug in 
your J2534 device to the DLC first. Why do I want you to plug it in first? Because I want you to see if it powers on from the car. If it doesn't, you're fighting a losing battle. So you'll have to figure out why it doesn't power up. You know the drill. But I want to make sure that the J2534 device will power up from the car. Because it will power up from the laptop, but it'll cause you problems. So if you start with plugging it into the DLC, you'll have a pretty good direction pretty fast. So we got it plugged into the DLC. We're going to hook it up to the laptop. Now, I'm making some assumptions here. I'm assuming that your laptop is set up for the vehicle that you're going to program or check for a calibration. So, apologies. So, make sure your laptop is configured for the car that you're going to be working on. The other thing is, I guess I probably should have done this first, so I'm going to change the order of these here. I want you to make sure customers are not waiting. It is best in the beginning to either hook up to your car or uh, a fellow tech's car or the shop owner's car or something like that. Just find somebody that going to be there all day that you can kind of play with it. I, I don't suggest you necessarily program the first car you plug into. Just check it for calibration to plug into it and kind of see how things work. So make sure the customer is not waiting and obviously make sure it's a car that is on your commitment list for your first 30 days. So if it's not, I, I just suggest walking away from it. Do, let it go somewhere else. Call your mobile guy. Whatever you're going to do. So, I also want you to just, to get a feel for things, I want you to hook up your voltmeter. And I want you to hook it up to the battery. Or if you got a, a DLC jump box, hook it up to the DLC. So, I just want you to make sure that you got good contact at the battery. I know you're probably used to using uh, battery chargers, stuff like that, but you'd be surprised how often uh, these stable power supplies don't get hooked up good. So I think that's probably a good place to start is any. That's kind of the direction you need to get things going so we can start our commitment, our 30-day commitment to plug it into a car a day and programming two cars a week. So this is this video was intended for the getting you started with the first vehicle. There'll be more to come. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, criticisms, concerns down at the bottom. Keep them clean or I delete them. You know the drill. Have a great day.